of all, uh, hello everyone. I'm Shikheb Ahmadi, currently working uh, with the CMI Marti Ehtisari Peace Foundation in the Women in Peacemaking team. And uh, I am responding to these questions uh, based on my individual capacity. So talking about the gender equality, yes, we all would um, agree that gender equality contributes to the long-term peace. And uh, for its uh, promotion, we need to embrace inclusive and gender responsive approach in the design and implementation of peace interventions or any other intervention. And at the same time, I would emphasize that the pre-design assessment of the local context is another crucial subject. Um, so talking about the local uh, level, uh, I would suggest that we need to consider all power dimensions in addition to the local legislation and official norms. We need to understand unofficial power structures as well. This means understanding the local context, existing challenges, limitations, and recognizing the constraints and the challenges that women face in, the, in that local context. The initiative should reflect upon all these factors and identify opportunities for separate, preferably separate consultations with women leaders, with women locals, men and other power holders of the community. This might help to find out the commonalities of the local context of that community uh, and effective approaches of promotion of gender equality through peace interventions. I would like to give a couple of examples uh, from Afghanistan. Uh, when, when we used to work in Afghanistan, usually, especially towards the southern provinces, when we had these development projects in the implementation, we had to, uh, to, to speak and, and, and to approach the tribal leaders, sometimes Amirs, Khans, or the commanders that they, they used to be very influential in those regions. So those were the initial gatekeepers. We had to approach them. And because they were influential, they could convince people to allow women to participate in these uh, projects. I can recall one of the development projects on women's economic empowerment. Uh, it, in one of the specific regions, it was very difficult to have only women included in the project because the men would not trust an outsider implementing the project or, or even the people coming from the other provinces. So in that context, we had to include couples from each household in order to ensure women's inclusion in that project. And I can also recall some regions that we were not able to implement any project only with women because, um, because of the certain norms and structures uh, and, and the conser conservativity of those contexts. And talking about the national level, um, I believe we need to have a holistic approach and an inclusive approach to recognize acknowledge and reflect on differences, diversity, and existing official and non-official power structures of the society. Otherwise, the, the initiative can go wrong and, and, and it, it will not only promote gender equality, but also undermine the main purpose of the initiative, which is peace, because it can create tensions and as well as ignite um, conflicts. I think we need to change the, the narrative of women being tagged only as a vulnerable group and, and victims who need um, uh, protection. Uh, yes, women and girls are affected in conflicts, both directly and indirectly, because at the end of the day, they are the people who collect the pieces if, if they are not affected directly. And they are the people who take care of the family, and they are the people who have to cope with the man-made circumstances of the conflicts. Women are one of the main stakeholders, and their inclusion automatically ticks one of the boxes towards sustainable peace. And their meaningful participation will assist uh, identifying suitable solutions. Furthermore, we need to be clear that women's participation in peace processes isn't a favor to them. It's their right to be at the table because they experience conflicts and they live with the conflict. I should also acknowledge that systematic changes are usually led by, uh, by the society and the locally driven change is slow. 
it's very slow sometimes and as and it requires long term commitment by the stakeholders by the community by the people by the government by the donors and by the international community long term commitment is required as for the systematic change we might need to challenge the power structures sometimes and break the silos which is not easy at all and it requires a strong political will and, and a strong commitment. In all. And I think balance of power has not been easy in many societies. And I would like to have some recommendations for the relevant audiences in peace and conflict field. Peace initiatives to be uh, mainstreamed in accordance to gender and women's vulnerabilities in local and national contexts. And the peace funding mechanisms should embrace gender component as a strict criteria for the peace uh, programs and initiatives. And it should support woman-led peace initiatives. And second, Establishing partnerships with different local authorities and creating opportunities for women should be uh, considered in, in order to ensure their participation in formal and informal decision-making structures. It will highly contribute to women's empowerment, which is a key to gender equality. And third, I think donors, they do have um, a responsibility beyond donating certain uh, interventions. Um, I, I would like the donors to, to understand the local context and allow local ownership. They should not implement something which is not suitable with the context because it will lose the, um, the ownership and, and it can be considered as patronizing initiatives which, which are not welcomed in most of the societies. And uh, last but not the least, it can be one of the cliche uh, uh, recommendations, but very important, uh, education, inclusive education and effective curriculum. The, the education curriculum should reflect, of course, on the existing norms and, and, and the situation, but it should also envision what we want to have our society in the future so that we grow the, the generation uh, with the change and the generation that would support women's uh, participation in different arenas. Uh, and youth participation should be a cross-cutting agenda, unfortunately, a very marginalized agenda even in most of the developing countries. I would assume that most of the people um, have heard or read about the situation in Afghanistan, but still it's very important to highlight what is happening. We all know that the economy of Afghanistan has collapsed. And according to the UN, Afghanistan is one of the worst humanitarian crisis situations yet. And, and according to the WFP World Peace, uh, World Food Program, uh, it has warned Afghanistan of famine in the coming winter and the harsh winter is on its way. People are struggling financially and above all these, the human rights and women's rights situation is mind blowing. It's uh, unbelievable. We have not only lost all the gains of the 20 years, but we have moved further backward. Today, the secondary schools are still closed and further restrictions are imposed on women, the restrictions on their mobility, and recently the gyms and sport clubs are closed on their faces. Women have lost the right to work. The, the social, political, and economic spaces are shrinking for women. And the media's access is, is banned. The international media cannot cover most of the places in Afghanistan and most of the regions of Afghanistan. Now the reality is very far from our vision. We do not know what is happening on the ground and a different picture is portrayed outside. There is a systematic operation and elimination of women is going on by the rulers. And I have some recommendations for the international community because I believe they would have a high say on the table and they can change, contribute to change the situation. The first and very important, do not legitimize Taliban. They are not trustworthy stakeholders. They had promised many things during the peace, so-called peace negotiation, but they have fulfilled none and we cannot trust them anymore. Second, there should be a monitoring mechanism in place 
to monitor the human rights situation and to document the war crimes and the injustice happening to women and minorities and other marginalized groups, what is happening with the Hazaras, what is happening with the Pancheres, and the abduction of the women protesters is, is not acceptable at all. Another, the aid distribution. Yes, the international community is like the EU sent this week 75 million to Afghanistan. They are trying to help Afghanistan, but the aid is not distributed uh, fairly. So the aid distribution should be monitored and the women should be involved in the distribution of the aid because most of the time women, women do not get it at all. The international community should consider that the solution to Afghanistan is not just humanitarian aid or evacuation, evacuating a handful of people because more than 30 million of people are suffering in Afghanistan and the solution should go beyond the humanitarian aid or so. In girls' education, I, I am surprised to say how our, uh, our expectations have lowered. Now we are educating for the secondary um, schooling of girls. I would like to bring it strongly that the girls' education should be should be supported and, and, and the international community should use the political and economic leverage that they have on Taliban to open uh, not only schools but universities for girls and, and to give them the freedom to have a future that they would wish to have. <laughs>